Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Recharge here at Abundant Grace Church. We're glad you join us here in person and online. Are you ready to receive a word in season from Pastor Frank tonight? Because he always brings it. He always prays on right, what God will have him minister on. And you know it's going to be good, right? Let's worship in the spirit and the truth. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give God our hearts tonight. Give him all the praise, honor, and glory that he deserves. An audience of one. Nobody looking around. It's just an encounter between you and the Lord tonight. Oh, and I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whisper of love the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Say, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. Who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.
good, right? Am I on there? All the time. We on there, Tom? Yes. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is good, right? All the time. All the time. You guys brave to smoke to come out, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It is an adventure out there. I've never seen anything like it, right? No. It's a great adventure. But glory to God. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I actually was thinking today, as I was during the day when it started to really close in. Yeah. I hope people, that the devil has their eyes blinded to the truth of the gospel, I get you. actually kind of took a look and said, man, this is maybe what hell is going to look like a little bit. <laughs> You know, think so about that with the smoke and the fire and the smell and the heat Short and the stone. and the anguish, right? Yeah. But glory to God, He is so good and He is so faithful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, we still have breath in our lungs, and you know where it comes from, right? Amen. Can you tell me? The Lord. Amen. The Lord gives us life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that's broken. Great Oh, 
ways Our hearts will cry, these bones will say Purchased that on the cross. Amen? Amen. And then when he went to the pit of hell and made a spectacle out of the devil, oh, triumphing oh. over him, making a fool out of him. <laughs> do you realize that guy that tries to come against you is nothing but a fool? Yeah. And all he can do is lie. Because yeah. he's been stripped, stripped of all power. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And guess what? That's a message. We can take to the world. Amen. The world that doesn't even think the devil exists. I know Christians that don't think the devil exists. Who do you think is doing all this? Who's causing the 400 fires in Canada? God? Well, that's what your insurance policy might say. It's an act of God. No, it's not. It's an act of the devil. Why can't they say that in an insurance policy? An act of the devil. Because nobody wants to say there's a devil. You know, people are okay also when you talk about God. But when you bring up Jesus, man, they get all freaky. Yeah, That's for sure. Oh, you believe God, but you don't believe Jesus? Well, you better believe Jesus because he is manifested presence in the Son of God. That's a problem. And when he comes back, they're going to be like, oh, I missed it. That's shouting stuff, right? Amen, glory to God. I'm just, I'm just delaying because I'm shaking off the rust and playing the guitar. It's been a while, but glory to God. We'll make a joyful noise, right? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sins? Jesus is calling, he's calling you, amen. amen. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for 
for a drink from the well. Jesus is calling. Mm, all right. We'll come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. He's always calling. Bring the sorrow, the trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Cause Jesus is calling. He's calling. Come on. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is what we the precious blood of oh, come on, see it again. Oh, come to the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a savior! Isn't he wonderful, church? Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah! Christ is risen! Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing somebody that's online watching, we want to welcome you guys watching online as well, was somebody battling with the spirit of depression. Now, depression is a spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. And really what it usually stems from is, and I know I've got a guitar stand here somewhere. Where is yeah, the spirit? Yeah. Oh, okay, George moved it. So. Of course I did. Of course I did. So I'm, I'm like, always playing tricks on you, Pastor. But, no worries. There you go, buddy. So, <laughs> depression's a spirit. And it usually stems from a fear, an anxiety, a worry. And really what fear is, fear is faith in something other than God. Faith in that thing that the enemy's trying to bring will overtake you. It's misplaced faith. So if you're dealing with depression, what does the word of God tell us? For God didn't give us. A spirit of fear, but of power, power, love, love activates 
the power, and a sound mind. When you look up that phrase, sound mind in the Greek, do you know what it means? Self-control. What do we need to get control of? We talked about it last week. The helmet of salvation protects us from those thoughts that the enemy tries to ram in our head. What's the, what, how do we do that? By spending time in the Word of God. Amen. So if that's you, that you're dealing with that, you can break that yoke, break that chain of bondage right now. By what? Realizing that you have all the power over your thought life. Because those things that are dripping in your ear are just lies from the pit of hell. Amen. Lies that have already been defeated. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Uh, let's receive our offering. Glory to God. Good, good, good. Excellent worship. Amen. 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 Um, it's just funny. I thought you were going to say what I was thinking about saying when you, say when you were up there, but I have to add to what he was saying. Normally, we always, most of the time, get the same thing. Um, but as we were worshiping, we're getting ready to, to uh, sow our offering. So if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will get one to you. Um, as you were talking about the fires not being from the enemy, I really feel impressed to pray. I was going to do that, actually. Exactly. Pray <laughs> of us in agreement, standing in agreement against those fires. Amen. Yeah. Because Jesus spoke to the wind. He spoke to the rain. He spoke to the fig tree. And he says that we are to operate in the same way. And yeah. if we believe, we will get what we believe. Amen. So as we, as I pray, I want you to be in agreement together. I know we are, that we're going to curse those, right. those fires. Amen. Because it's not only bothering Canadian people, it's bothering us. And we're God's children. This is our territory. Amen. This is what this is where we are. And um, so we're going to do that right now before we do our times. And then I have something really cool to tell you. Father, we we come to you in the name of Jesus in agreement, Father. Lifting up this situation, Father, of these wildfires, of these, I don't know, numerous amounts of fires going on everywhere, not just in Canada, but everywhere. We lift this situation up to you. And, and Father, we know that we have the power to speak to those things and it shall happen. So we're in agreement, Father, that as we say, fires will dissipate. Dissipate in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, burn out. Stop causing chaos and havoc. Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Stop your maneuvers in our town, around our children, our grandchildren, wherever they are. Wherever they are, our property here, properties in, in Canada, the Christians up there that are standing against. And we call the rain down. Call the rain down. Rain. Come in the name of Jesus and put those fires out. However much we need, rain come in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, say amen. 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 We have the power and we just released it. Now watch it happen. Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So, we're ready to tithe? God is a giver. He gives to us. He loves us. He he can outgive anything. Anyone, any anything that you do, he can outgive. I'm going to tell you a funny story after we do this. If you're giving online, if you're giving and you're watching online, you can text your offering to 732-479-8787. You can text that way and it'll prompt you on things to do. You can go on our website, www.abundantgracechurch.com. Go to the giving tab and follow the directions there. Or you can send us a check in the mail. Tithes and offerings, they're a huge part, a huge part. If we trust God to give us back, right? More than what we could ever imagine. The, uh, the address is Abundant Grace Church, 108 Indian Head Road. 
Tom's River, New Jersey, 08753. Now, do we all agree and all believe that seed produces after its own kind, yes, right? Yeah. If you need a bill, help somebody pay a bill. Mm -hmm. If you need extra, so extra, so an offering or on top of your tithes, right? If you need anything, seed produces after its own kind. We have sown TVs and God has blessed us with Amen. people just giving us TVs and other things. Amen. Friendship. You need a friend? Be a friend. If you want whatever you need, do that for someone else, yep. right? Amen. Funny story before we collect the offering. Actually, you can collect it while I'm talking about it. You can collect this, and then I'll pray over it. Um, funny story. A year ago, a year ago, this is it just it's just so wonderful how God works. A year ago, we uh, or two years ago, we moved from up north to down here, and 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 we were getting rid of some stuff. And I had shelves in the garage that they were plastic. PVC shelves that you can't attach them to the walls. They were kind of like, if you don't have a lot of stuff on them, they're kind of dangerous to fall over. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I gave them away because somebody else really wanted them. So I gave them away. Then we moved down here, and I said, why did I give those shelves away? <laughs> I really needed those shelves. So I said, Lord, I sowed the seed. I'm, I'm a, we're all faith people. I sowed the seed for the shelves, right? Last Wednesday, someone in here, right, said, hey, I remember your Facebook post last year asking if you needed, you know, if anybody had any shelves, because I needed shelves, right, and I sowed the seed, and sure enough, she said, I remember the post, right off this point over there, <laughs> I remember the post, and she said, I have shelves, she brought them today. God is so good, so faithful. You sew, and he doesn't care if it's a shelf, if it's a, if it's a it's paying someone's bill, if it's a TV, if it's friendship, sewing after your own, whatever you need, sew and help someone else. That's how God works. I'm so grateful for those shelves. I can't wait to put them up. <laughs> and that was a year ago. Amen. So stay with your seed. Whatever the seed is, whatever you need, God will give it to you. Don't give up. Because it could be a year or two years. Right? It could be a year or two years. All right. Let's pray over the offering. Father, we're so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for always being faithful. Father, we miss it. We cannot be faithful to you, but you're so faithful to us, Lord. We thank you for providing all we need. Thank you for increasing us more and more, us and our children. Thank you, Father, that we never lack, we never run out, not in this church, not in our personal lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are the source of everything good. We thank you, Lord, that we ask you, you hear us. And we thank you, Lord, that you're providing always for us, Lord. We look to you, Lord, and we thank you. As we give to you, we know you're giving back to us, Father. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. We thank you, Lord, that you're watching over your word to perform it. We thank you, Lord, that when we speak, things happen. We thank you, Lord, for the rain that's coming, that we spoke it, it's happening. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, and I thank you so much publicly for my shelves. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, hallelujah, glory to God. God is good, right? Do you want to preach or do you want to keep going? I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't know you. I felt like Pastor Anthony with Miss Carol. You ever going to land that plane? <laughs> Just kidding. God is good, right? Uh, if you have your Bibles, open up to Ephesians chapter 6. You guys know where we are. You know, this intended six-week series that turned into a six-month series. But it's not our time, right? It's the Holy Ghost time. And let's, while you guys are turning there, let's pray. Father, I come to you as touching this word tonight, Father. Your word, Father. Asking you for the anointing. The anointing that is on your word to change people, people's lives. And I, I yield myself to you. I ask you to speak through me. Not what I've prepared, what you've prepared for everybody here who had ready ears to hear your word. Father, you know where each and every one of us is at. And I ask you to meet each and every one of us exactly at our point of need. And we say bring glory to yourself this evening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go back and do a review. 
Um, you can always catch up with either on Facebook, all the messages from all our services are on Facebook, or at our YouTube channel, which is AGCTV1. And guess what? They're free. Yes. And if they're free, there's no excuses. Okay. Amen? So go back and check it out. But I wanted to move on to new territory. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, which is where we started, or which way we were actually were last week. But the Apostle Paul talks about two pieces of armor in the same verse. Uh, and it says, And take the helmet of salvation, which we looked at last week, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, the sword of the Spirit is the most aggressive weapon that God has given us. And just to do a little recap or an overview of what was going on in Rome at the time Paul was physically looking at the Roman soldier, there were actually five swords which the Roman army used. However, the one that Paul was re referring to, uh, I wanted to read this. By, and it was actually a description by Rick Renner. Just so you guys know, what I've been teaching on, obviously looking into the Word of God, but a lot of this also came out of the study of Rick Renner's book, Life in the Combat Zone. So I encourage you guys to pick up a copy of it and read it, because it goes into much more detail than we could ever cover. It's an awesome, awesome read. But I want, to, I want to read to you verbatim from the Life in the Combat Zone, Rick Renner's description of the sword that the Apostle Paul was talking about that the Roman soldier was carrying. And he says this, The fifth sword was the type of sword that Paul had in his mind when he wrote about this piece of spiritual armor in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, saying, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The word for sword, sword, as used in this text, is taken from a Greek word, macharia. This brutal weapon of murder was approximately 19 inches long. Both sides of its blade were razor sharp, making the sword much more dangerous than the other four. In addition, the tip of the sword was turned upward, causing the point of the blade to be extremely sharp and deadly. This two-edged blade inflicted a wound far worse than all the other swords. Before a Roman soldier withdrew this per particular sword, and he gets, he gets graphic here, from the gut of his enemy, he would hold this sword very tightly with both hands and give it a wrenching twist inside the enemy's stomach. Hmm. This would cause the opponent's entrails to spill out as the soldier pulled the sword from his, the enemy's body. Of all the swords available, the Macharia sword was the most dangerous of all. Although the other swords were deadly, this one was a terror to the imagination. This sword was not only intended to kill, but completely rip an enemy's insides to shreds. Wow. It was a weapon of murder. Wow. And Paul's talking about this in Ephesians chapter 6. This is the sword that we get to wield. And you might be saying, yes, that's a natural look at it. But we need to rip out the guts of the enemy. You know, many people think, now remember, Roman soldiers had complete armor. So did the opponents. They fought often. And many people think that when they take up a sword, you know, we, we see all these movies and stuff, and, you know, you see people swinging, especially like in medieval days, they had these two-handed broadswords, which was one of the swords that the uh, Roman soldier originally carried. The, the one sword that the Roman soldier carried was a big, long broadsword that needed two hands, but it only had one sharpened edge. The other edge was blunt. That's not the sword we have. And it was made to be swung. But when we swing something at somebody that has armor, guess what? It doesn't penetrate. But history has proven out that a sword that is sharp, if it penetrates only two inches into an enemy, it's usually fatal. Wow. Two inches wow. is fatal. Paul goes on in our verse of scripture after he says the sword of the spirit was saying which is the word of God, right? But we got to look at that word, word. It's kind of a weird way to put it, but you got to look at the word, word in the Greek. In this verse of scripture, the word, word is, should be a familiar term to all of us, is the word rhema. Where rhema. 
What is rhema? Rhema describes something that is spoken clearly, vividly, spoken in an undeniable language, spoken in an unmistakable, unquestionable, certain and definite terms. It's a rhema word. The New Testament word rhema carries the idea of a word such as a word from the Lord or from the Holy Spirit that literally gets into our heart, okay? It's a quickened word directly for you in a time when you absolutely need it. Rhema. That's right. The rhema word of God. Have you ever had a situation where you've been in it under pressure, maybe the immediate need? You know, I, I can remember... I'm going to use this as a circumstance. And I don't know if Jody got a rhema word, but rhema can also be a guidance to do something. Mm -hmm. We were in our office years ago, and we heard a commotion downstairs in, in, the, oh. in our, um, we had tenants downstairs. And there was, there's bathrooms down there for them in the hallway, and there was a commotion. And lo and behold, one of the women that worked downstairs passed out. Jody ran down, quickened to go down. Mm -hmm. Not like, it wasn't really a loud commotion. I mean, I heard some people, but that could have been people talking loud, right? She immediately goes downstairs and lays hands on the woman. Mm -hmm. We don't know her from Adam. Why do we see her around the office building? But we didn't know her. She laid hands on her, and I, w I came down, and I, I, what, I, what I saw would actually amaze me. This woman, who really doesn't know Jody, was staring at her face, while she was laying hands on her and literally holding on to Joe, and her daughter was there. Does her daughter work with her? Not looking at her daughter, not looking at anybody else, was looking at my wife who was praying for her at the time, staring in her face, holding on to her. Have you ever had an experience like that? Something comes up on the inside, a verse of scripture, a divine guidance to do something. Hang on to that, right? In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to what? Your remembrance. Yes. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Well, when the Holy Spirit brings something to our remembrance in our time of need, that is a rhema word from God. We have the greater one living on the inside of us. But the amount of rhema we receive, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but the amount of rhema we receive is dependent and predicated upon something we need to do. I'll elaborate now because I don't want to leave it hanging out there. If we don't spend time in the word, how are we going to get a rhema word? Amen. Let me say it again. If we don't spend time in the word, how are we going to receive a rhema word? Because how, how so often does the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, speak to us? Through the word of God. Can he bring a scripture to your remembrance? Because it says bring, to our, bring things to our remembrance or to your remembrance. Can he bring it to our remembrance if we don't have anything to remember? No, we don't read it. Way ahead. That's okay. Rhema is a specific word or message the Holy Spirit quickens to our hearts for a special purpose at our moment of need. God has equipped us with every single weapon we need when a situation arises. You know, sometimes it's a long-term situation, but it can be an immediate situation. You know, something just happened right now. I had a situation. I don't know why I'm telling these stories, but the Holy Spirit knows why. I was, it was actually... It was the day after Jody's father went home to be with the Lord. And we were all gathered at mom's house. And I was running, I don't know why I was running late. Everybody's there. Our friends had come up from Regina, Richie and Rose, you, many of you have met. They were up and they were doing breakfast. Her brother was up from Atlanta and everybody's around. And I came over after. And I'm coming down Route 37 by the old Kia building, you know, that small building. And as I'm driving, a little back behind me, I see a car come out of nowhere jump the curb, yes. hop in over a barrier, and crash. Oh, yeah. 
And I pulled into that little Kia parking lot. And I don't even, I just, it wasn't, I didn't do it. It just happened. I jerked the wheel and pulled over, ran over to this guy's car, car's smoking, airbags deployed, and the guy's having a seizure. Oh, yes. Yes. So coincidentally, and not coincidentally, uh, off-duty sheriff's officer had stopped as well. We got him out of the car, and he's convulsing. Now, I didn't say anything. Hey, I'm a pastor. I'm going to lay hands on him. I just laid my hands on him, and and he literally stopped convulsing. Amen. But I, you know, sometimes we're like, we don't, we don't really realize what's going on. We're distracted. We keep going. I don't even know to this day how I, why in that instant I jerked the wheel and pulled into that parking lot. Quickened, yep. quickened guidance when you need it. That wasn't particularly for me. That was really for that man. I'm sure he's fine. Don't know what happened. The cops finally came. The ambulance came. I asked the police officer, is there anything you need for me? Like, no, you guys are good. Thanks. We'll see you. Took off. But, now I want to look at the correlation between the sword of the spirit and the first piece of weaponry we looked at, which was the loin belt. The sword and the loin belt are interconnected. The other, like the other pieces of armor God's given us, the sword and the loin belt are 100% inseparable. What do we know that the loin belt represents? The written word of God. The Word of God is our loin belt, that central piece of armor that everything else is attached to. The one that's not the most beautiful piece, but the one that is the most important from the perspective of our ability to stand against the, the, the enemy's attacks. And like I said just two seconds ago, the Word of God is our primary source of a rhema word from God. The Word of God has 100% the ability all the time to repel every single attack of the enemy. The enemy can't come against or even stay and stand against the Word of God. But again, I said earlier, a rhema. And, the, and using and putting it to practice the Word of God is 100% dependent on what we do. Okay, we're going to look at this in a second. You remember, what kind of sword is it? Two-edged. Remember that. It's a two-edged sword. Not one, but two. When we rightfully wield the sword of the spirit we stab the enemy and this requires a specific quickened word from god you know too many believers think in order to have a word from god or have a rhema word it's got to be like a 20 page prophecy it doesn't have to be that you know very often it's a very short guidance direction something drop in your heart and i thought it'd be kind of good to look at some people in the Word of God that had that kind of rhema experience. They didn't sit down and write a 20-word prophecy and say, well, this must be my rhema word. No, they got concise, to the point, guidance in a time when they needed it. So, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn over to Genesis chapter 12. I want to read starting in verse 1. And this is Abram at the time, not Abraham. This is pre pre-name change, right? Yep. Bonnie, you can put that up there when you can. I'll start reading because I know people are probably going all the way back to the beginning from Ephesians chapter 6, which is closer to the two-third mark of the Bible, if not three quarters. All right. Now, the, the word of the Lord said unto Abraham. The word of who? The Lord. The Lord. A rhema word of direction for Abram. Right. Get thee out of thy country. This is the King James Version. And from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Well, hang on, Lord, I need 19 more pages of direction before I leave. Mm -hmm. 
That's it, right? It goes on to say, and I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Yes. That's not enough, Lord. I need 19 more pages. <laughs> no, a quickened guidance exactly when Abram needed it. Yeah. Yep. Here's somebody else. Actually, I don't know why I have King James here. Bonnie, can you put the new King James up? Genesis chapter 37, verse 6. That's weird. Cut and paste the wrong thing. Let's look. Let's look at someone else. This is Joseph. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. Verse 7. There, were, there we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. Verse 8. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have domain over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. What did he get? In a vision, a quickened what did the Holy Spirit does? Will show us what? Things to come. Things to come. Right. He got an opportunity. Now he will guide us into all truth, mm -hmm. right? He will bring think, bring whatever we need to our remembrance and show us things to come. Why is that? The Holy Spirit is out in front of us. Yeah. Too many people think the Holy Spirit is behind us pushing us along. No, he's out in front of us, right? right? Out in front of us. How about Paul's ministry? Did Paul ever receive a, may, a rainbow word from God? How about his Damascus Road experience? Was that not a word from God? Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? Comma, Lord. He knew. I believe he knew who he was persecuting and just did it because he was so grounded in religion. I believe he knew who the Lord was. And I believed on the inside he kind of believed. But he went around persecuting Christians because he was grounded in on the Pharisee of Pharisees. Yep. But did he have a ring of word from God? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did we have another example of Paul's conversion? Did Ananias yep. receive a ring of word from God? Yes. Hey, there's this guy at the street called straight. I'm paraphrasing. Go lay hands on him because he's, you know, he's here and he's going to be used for my kingdom. And Ananias knew who Paul was, or at that time Saul. Hang on a second. Do you know what this dude is doing? I'm going to go there and I'm going to die. He's going to kill me. But it was a what? A rhema word. What was important after he received the rhema word? Follow the instruction. Don't just receive the word and be like, okay. No, do it. Should we be hearers of the word only? Or doers of the word? Doers of the word. When the Lord puts a sword, which is a rhema word, into our hands, it will probably be short, concise, and succinct. Amen. We could Abraham could Abraham could have stopped that. Go to a land I will show you. Okay. Would are we willing to do that same thing? Yes. You know what? I believe you, Lord. I trust you. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. But I. You haven't told me yet, but I'm going to go anyway. Right? Amen. What is a two-edged sword? And guys, this is where we need to really pay attention and listen up. Because this becomes our part. Right? Uh, over in Revelation chapter 1, verse 16. This is John's vision that was given to him. Right? In Revelation. And he, he had in his right hand. This is Jesus, right? John seeing Jesus in his dream. Seven stars, and out of his mouth, wait a second, out of his mouth? When a two-edged sword? Well, that's weird. You don't hold a sword with your mouth. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. I want to look at that phrase, two-edged sword. <laughs> it's a compound of the Greek word, di, literally di, meaning 
uh, two, and stomos meaning mouth. Wait a second, two edge means two mouths? Mm -hmm. Jesus had the two-edged sword in his mouth? Uh-huh. When these two words are compounded, it's the word distomos. The new world, the new word describes something that is two mouthed. Mm. Not two edges, two mouthed. Remember I said we had a part to play. What is John telling us? That the sword literally has two mouths. We could correctly translate that verse of scripture to mean or say, out of his mouth there was a sharp, sharp two-mouthed sword. You don't have to turn here. For the sake of looking at what we're talking about and reinforcing what we're talking about. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says this. For the word of God is what? Quick. Quick. And what? Powerful. Powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, we quote that verse of scripture, but do we really know what that verse of scripture means? Well, I think we're going to get revelation tonight of what God is actually talking about. And why is the word of God repeatedly referred to as a two-edged sword? One sharpened edge of the sword came into being when the word of God initially proceeded from the mouth of God. That's one edge. I'm going to say it again. One sharpened edge of the sword came into being when the word of God initially proceeded from the mouth of God. Here's the second edge. The second edge of the sword is added when the word of God proceeds out of our mouths. That's the other edge. That's our part to play. We speak. It's what we speak. It's what we say. That's right. How many people know, because the Word of God tells us and believe, that the Word of God was given to men, inspired by the Holy Ghost, right. to put it down in writing. Amen. <laughs> right? All, all Scripture is inspired by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? Yep. And God put that into motion. It was almost like the single-edged sword, the one I talked about earlier, that was heavy and able to, you know, just beat up people. But that in of itself is not going to stop the attack of the enemy. Because why? If we have the Word of God inspired, given to men by God, God put it into existence. That's the first edge. But in order to really combat the enemy, we need both edges to be working. When that same dunamis power-packed word is planted in our hearts and we speak it out, that ring of word that's quickened to us will create the second edge of the sword. We cannot defeat the enemy if we say nothing. We can't sit there and be like, and even if you're casting down the thoughts in your mind, oh, uh, you know, you're a loser. Don't you know what you did? No, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The old man has gone away, the new man. But that's in your mind thinking? That's great. Say it. Right. Say something. We cannot defeat the enemy if we say nothing. It's true. It's true. Because then we're only implementing the one edge of the sword, which is meant from to go from God to us. And to come out the second edge needs to come out of our mouth. You want to stab the enemy? Do what the, the Roman soldier did? <clears throat> Twist out? Wow. Yeah. Gun him like a fish? Amen. You need both edges of the sword. And we're responsible for that second edge. Amen. Wow. What divides, what does division of soul and spirit mean? Like I said, I always look at this verse of scripture, and I actually love this verse of scripture, but we really need to break it down. So when God's word begins to work on the inside, it cuts through all the clutter that's in our mind. Right? It goes right 
to eradicating our emotions and go straight into our hearts. You know, when the enemy brings thoughts, those thoughts, if we don't really get a hold of them, invoke emotions, yeah. feelings. Emotions and feelings will betray us all the time. It's the way it is. Our feelings and emotions betray us. Yep. And then what does the enemy do? When he brings those thoughts, he gets us into fear. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fear makes us make a decision cool. that we shouldn't have made because we made it out of yeah. fear, not out of a rhema word from God. And we find ourselves helping to fulfill what he wants to do. Right. Not what God wants for us. You know, the word of God, the rhema word, will literally, will literally help us change the way we think, behave, and live. True. True. Have you ever got checked on the inside about something? I shouldn't go in there. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't watch this. Because mm -hmm. yep. I don't, TV's like wacky, man. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's like I watch, we watch like the History Channel. And, like, there's only certain things you can watch there, even. <laughs> Discovery, like, I'm, I watch, like, Deadliest Catch. I've been watching that since the beginning. There's not much you can watch on TV, though. Yeah. Right. And then you got to turn the commercials for the other shows they have off. Yeah. But have you ever gotten that check on the inside? Yeah. That's guidance. That's right. That's right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says this. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Amen. God sees everything. He sees what we need, when we need it. And he's made the Holy Spirit available to us to quicken to us exactly what we need in our time of need. Yeah. And when we do that and we get the revelation, oh, I'm embroiled in this situation. Well, no weapon formed against me shall prosper comes up on the inside of you. Don't let it just stay in here. Because right. it came from here to here to come out of here. That's right. That's good. That's good. Our problem so often is this. Mm -hmm. yep. Two ways. We speak doubt and unbelief after we think and say something. And that's the other side of the coin. We can't say no weapon formed against us shall prosper when you get that quickened word and turn around and say, man, this doesn't look good. Double-minded man will not receive. That's it. That's right. When we ignore the word, when we ignore the Holy Spirit's guidance in our life, we wind up back in our prior condition. And honestly, worse. Our old patterns, our old lifestyles, and we shrink back. And sometimes it's not all at once. It can be very, very subtle. Because the Word of God talks about the cauterized heart or the calloused heart. That happens over time. Because when we entertain something we shouldn't entertain, you know, we get that check on the inside, we override it, we do it again. And then we get it again and we override it. But the more we do it, we get so far from God that our, our conscience becomes cauterized. And what happens? We're back in the old way we were. But when we allow the Word of God in our lives, it's like a divine blade slicing right to the heart of the matter. Thank God. Dividing what? Soul and spirit. We need to speak the Word in faith. Head knowledge is not heart knowledge. I know many believers who can quote Genesis to Revelation, but don't have it in here. They read it, they know Scripture, Better than I do, because how many times have I shared with you, my mind doesn't work in scripture and verse. My mind just works in scripture. I got to go back sometimes and say, where's that? Right. I'll be honest with you. It's just the way it is. After all these years, that's just the way right. I'm designed, and that's fine. But at least we what? No scripture. Right. But you know what? Do we believe what we're saying? Because we need to believe what comes out of our mouth. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. Believe those things which you say, and you shall have. And when you look, translate that verse of Scripture, it says you shall have what come, ever comes out of your mouth. The second edge of the sword. Now finish with this. I got another regret quote. Finish right on time. I'm shocked. Rick Renner said this in his book, and again, I encourage you guys... And we're going to wrap this up hopefully next week with the hidden piece of weaponry we have. 
Rick Brenner said this in his book, Life in the Combat Zone. When the Holy Spirit reaches into the reservoir of Scripture inside of you. Inside who? You. Your friend, your family, your neighbor, Me. your pastor, Me. your ministry leader. When the Holy Spirit reaches into the reservoir of Scripture inside of you and quickens one of those verses to your memory, you are ready to wield that verse like a mighty sword. Amen. Oh. Glory to God. Do we understand what we're talking about here? We have a two-edged sword available to us. The one edge is done. It's a completed work. It's God's work given to us. But that second edge has everything to do with what we do. What we get in on the inside of us and what we speak out. Amen. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for revelation knowledge this evening. Thank you for meeting each and every one exactly at their point of need, Father. Thank you for your word. Your word is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing unto the soul and spirit and joints and matter, and discerning the hearts of us. We thank you for that. We thank you. It cuts through all the clutter in our mind that the enemy tries to bring and gets right to the heart of the matter, our spiritual heart. And we thank you for it all. And we, we thank you for everything you said and done here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So glory to God. We thank you guys for coming out. I think we're going to wrap this up next week. Who knows? <laughs> um, but we look forward to seeing you next week. You guys on, on live stream, thank you for coming out as well. Don't forget tomorrow night, women's meeting, 6 p.m. Uh, and don't forget Faith and Healing School, Thursday and Friday, 10.30 a.m. And don't forget to come out for Sunday service by 10 a.m. on Sunday. And by then, the smoke's going to be gone. Yes, Amen. Amen. Glory to God.